Welcome home. It's Irish Family History with curious news and notes. Celebrating our fourth year of this podcast at the Irish Roots Cafe, where every day's a holiday and there's always room for one more. One of six broadcast series from the head school at irishroots.com. I'm Michael Laughlin, your host, publisher of rare Irish books and uh, information on every county in Ireland since 1978. Be sure to read our blog, complete with links to click on from this podcast and search our master index and books for free. Molly, wet the tea, Katie, bar the door, Sweeney, clear that floor and bring out the Irish dancers. It's time we get this show on the road. Oh, well, welcome to what is actually our sixth year, our first podcast of our sixth year of the Irish Family History Podcast Broadcast Network. Uh, I just haven't found the time to uh, update that little promo there, but that's okay. It's a lot of fun, and this is show number 177, and among our topics today, the family name of the day is McKenna. The Irish County of the Month is County Monaghan. The Book of the Month is Pinner's Census of Ireland, Part 2. And the Curious News is Top Baby Names in Ireland in 2010. Uh, the web page, page is Irish Christmas in China, Turkey, Sweden, and more. A uh, curious note, an extinct bird returns to Ireland alive. And the one-minute podcast is going to be about a family connection made. A little recorded phone call that you might try yourself one day. Oh, it's the notes from Mike. That's me, and I'm here just to tell you what might be going on in the background here. Uh, you know, we've got three ty- kinds of podcasts. One of them, the free for all. Most of them are free. Uh, number two, we've got some archive for a small fee. And number, oh, that was number two. And number three, we have some member-only podcasts, just to keep in the back of your mind there. Uh, now, if we take a look at what's been going on, it seems like a family connection has been made from an earlier uh, show, either the show notes or the podcast, where we an- we announced the Handybod or Handybode family search. I'll put the call on today's one-minute podcast and... Uh, Hey, just remember it can happen to you too. Uh, you got to start out by uh, letting me know who you're looking for. And especially if you're a member, uh, drop a little note on my email or on the phone number that I leave here on this podcast every week. We'll get it on the air and it might actually bring you in some uh, results. And that's what we're looking for. And today is the time to email me and tell me what topics or questions you want answered in 2011 or projects. And number three, if you think it's been cold this winter, you should read read about the year 1740 in Ireland. We'll talk about that later in news and notes. Oh yes, and remember there's that Irish cruise that's leaving uh, out of Florida on the very end of uh, January, and I'm thinking about getting on there seriously, and they've got all kinds of great musicians. It's a great trip. If you're thinking about going on such a thing, let me know. That might influence my decision, you know. You never can tell, but boy, it's a good one. I'm, I'm really thinking about it. Uh, and now we're moving up to the next segment, and that's that one-minute podcast. We're going to hear about a little success from our broadcast here. Well, today we're going to play a little uh, response we had on our phone line that we give out each week. Uh, a fellow that had heard some uh, notes on the Handy Boat family and somebody looking, and he decided to reply, so... We put the two of them in touch with each other, and uh, I'll just let you I'll just let you hear his phone call so you know what I'm talking about. Mr. O'Loughlin, my name is Chris Lamoureux. I am interested in Handabode, and you have an email from a Frank Handabode, and you do not uh, uh, provide his email address. I am looking to get in touch with him. My email is... Is Chris, C H R I S dot Lamoureux, L A M O U R E U X one, as in the number one, at gmail.com. So that's Chris dot Lamoureux one at gmail.com. If you could either A, pass along my email address to Mr. Hannibode, Frank Hannibode, or B, give me his email address or some way to contact him, 
I sure would appreciate it because we share common ancestry. Thank you, sir. Bye. Well, that's uh, an example of what can happen if you actually get your word out and we get it on the podcast and on the blog. And, you know, we get over over 10 million hits total uh, for the year on my two websites, irishroots.com and the other one I've got that I work myself that connects to irishroots.com. So uh, uh, give it a shot. You might have to try 20 or 30 things before one works, but, hey, this might be that one, and it, it, it pays to give it a shot. So uh, remember... You can send it in on an email on from my webpage. You can leave a note on the form I've got there where it says contact. And you can also uh, leave me a message on the phone line. And that'll get a little more attention for a lot of people when they can actually hear it podcast. And then I'll include that uh, notes on that in the blog so it gets a whole lot of exposure. It might work right away and it might take... Uh, might take a week or two. I've had some people, I've had it take a year when somebody pl- replayed that podcast since they're available forever almost. Uh, and they say, hey, I want to talk to that fella. And we get in touch and uh, boy, you, you'd think uh, you think you'd hit the jackpot. You know what I mean? After a year or two of waiting, it's one of those little surprises you just might get. Well, now it's time for the books of the month, and we picked out two today. Now, let's see. The first one's going to be County Monaghan Genealogy and Family History Notes, and that sort of goes with our family name of the week or of the month today. Uh, County Monaghan figures real prominently with McKenna, and uh, I've got a link on the blog to it. It's one of our 34-volume set of uh, Irish family uh, histories, and uh, it's not a giant volume, this one. It's more of a volume that will just sort of help you look and search throughout the county county has actual uh, records and extracts and coat of arms and i cut them out and put them in there just as they appeared in the old books some of those coats of arms are like 300 years old that i've used and i just put them in there right as i saw them i didn't sit around and color them up into four colors and make them nice and shiny i let you see them just the way i see them and we include any other notes we see now, there might be uh, some family history on a few specific families, but what this book is really for is to let anybody who's looking in County Monaghan uh, become familiar with the records and how to search them and what they look like and who to write to and where to go and uh, a little map of the county, too, of course, to help you with that. But uh, it's an introductory primer, really. It's it's meant to help anyone find any family And whether your family name is in there or not, you can't be sure, but you can always find it on our website and look in the list on that website search. Uh, You can search for the surnames, put it in there. We'll talk about that in a little bit, and it'll pull up uh, uh, what books your name appears in if that's the only thing you're interested in. So keep that in mind. And, of course, we've also got the uh, excerpts from Pinner Survey that I started last week. Uh, We also find in that book that a man by the name of John Wisher is given as now writing the name as Wishart, W-I-S-H-A-R-T, adding a T to the end of the name. And it's also noted that Carew wrote the very same name as Wyhard, W-Y-H-A-R-D, and that he had returned to Scotland and returned and suffered many misfortunes. And we also find lists of tenants who were not landowners in addition to just the strictly... uh, census of landowners type document so that's an example and if you want to know some of the names that are included in this volume multiple times uh, you're going to find names like Atchison and Alexander and Bingley and Beresford and O'Donnelly and O'Boyle and uh, Brown, Chichester, McCaffrey, Butler, McBrien, Cole, Dillon, Hamilton Oh, and quite a few more and you'll notice there's there's English, there's Irish, there's Scottish uh, but there's, there, those are all really covered several times in this book, so you might get lucky there. Hey, we got a link to that book we just talked about on the blog to both of them, so check them out if you're interested. And remember, we've got a podcast, we've got a blog reader, and we've got the blog itself. The blog is just a written form of the show notes for this show. The blog reader is where you press a button and the computer reads the blog to you. And, of course, the podcast is where I'm announcing it like I am right now. I don't know which way you're listening, but it's available all those ways. And coming up, you know, it's time to say farewell maybe to Pat and Mike as as the very top 
Uh, we've got some brand new names that top Ireland in 2010, and they may surprise you. It's coming up later. Right now, it's time to raise our eyes skyward, give thanks, and ask for help. Here are today's Magnificent Seven. One, Chelsea Croft of Lake Alfred, Florida, your County Galway book has shipped. Number two, Mary McKee of Winnecta, Illinois, your County Tipperary genealogy book has shipped. Number three, Kelly Stevens of Seattle, Washington, your Mayo and Cavan County books have shipped. And Leslie Rawling of Downington, Pennsylvania, your Cary genealogy book has shipped. And Dan McFeely, your Annals of Ireland by the Four Masters uh, has shipped. And that makes you... The Patron of the Day. That's a great book. A lot of history for a lot of, a lot of centuries. Uh, number six, The Irish Shop at 818 East New Haven Avenue, Melbourne, Florida. Your book of Irish families and County Wexford genealogy book has shipped. And number seven, Chris Trendall of Toronto, Canada. Your Kings County genealogy book has shipped. So, uh, hey, that's a chance for me to say thank you to everybody who gets a book or gets anything from us or becomes a member. It keeps us going. I do appreciate it. You're the only thing that keeps us going. Time for the family name of the day, and that name is McKenna. And, of course, I think our member is Leanne Sampson, who's looking for McKenna. And they say they're looking for great-grandfather Michael McKenna, who left Ireland in 1860 and traveled with his parents, Patrick and Anne, and his siblings, Patrick and Bridget. And they're looking for a birthplace in Ireland, aren't we all now? And you can spell that name with or mit, without the Mac or Mick prefix. Sometimes it's just spelled K-E-N-N-A. Uh, sometimes you even spell, see it f spelled G-I-N-N-A-W. Uh, but we're... we're familiar with that if we've been listening to this podcast for a while, aren't we? Uh, you can find it in Variant Spelling Group number 2439 in the Guide to Various Spellings of Irish Family Names. I've got a link to that on the blog. Now let's take a quick look at some beginning notes on the name. There's a lot more in the book. Can't read it all here, but uh, you're going to find that McKenna is among the top 100 most numerous surnames in Ireland. And uh, uh, they have traditional roots all the way back uh, in the province of Ulster, and that's in the north of Ireland. And most most anciently, they're going to they're gonna be found in the Uniel in Ulster, but the name is found also in Cork and Kerry because there's always a few vagabonds out of every family that spread throughout Ireland and end up going to the continent and even to America, and that's a lot of us, you know. And they're anciently given as chiefs of Trua or Trug in the barony of Tru in County Monaghan in modern times. They're found several centuries later in the parish of Magara in County Down. And in 1659, there were over 90 heads of families of this clan in County Monaghan. And the McKenna family has generally kept that Mac prefix before the name in the modern times. A lot of shorter names like that, you're going to find they kept that Mac or O, but not all the time. Uh, but there's all, there's much more to the story. I've got it in the book of Irish families, great and small. That's just a little bit to give you some background. And, uh, Hey, if you take a look at the, uh, Irish, uh, book of arms and look in there, you see it in the old section before the coming of the Irish free state. And I don't have it in there at all because I didn't find a listing in any of those centuries, uh, from the, from the heralds of Ireland, uh, that I checked in and everything of course is documented in the Irish book of arms. I've got a link to that book on the web, of course, on the web page, irishroots.com. But they're not given, and a lot of other families aren't given in the Irish Book of Arms because they didn't have arms at that time. Doesn't mean they weren't patriotic or influential. It might mean that the queen didn't want to grant them arms. You never know. Or maybe the family didn't become influential until you came along, and that made them very important. Uh, you'll have to look it up yourself just to find out. Uh... But I'll explain more about that. I've explained it before. I'll explain it again later, but that's just to let you know. Don't feel bad if you're not in there. And coming up later, we're going to talk about some broken water pipes and uh, who who jumped in to help us now and why. And, uh, hey, what about Ireland replacing Paris? What's that about?
Well, let's take a look at the free master index online at irishroots.com, and it shows, oh, over 40 listings for the McKenna name, spelled M-C-K-E-N-N-A. Here's a few examples. A. McKenna in Irish Knighthoods. Uh, T. McKenna in Mac, Mick, and O. names, 17th to 20th century records. That's the name of the book. Uh, Pat McKenna in A Special Census of Ireland, Pinner's Survey. And that's one of the books of the month this month, so you know. I'm always looking out for you. Number four, uh, McKenna is in the Missouri Irish book, and it's in the Irish Families on the Cal California Trail, and that's mostly about the Irish who settled in California. And number six, McKenna in County Fermanagh and Louth Genealogy, and uh, County Monaghan, Ireland Genealogy and Family History Notes. And, hey, you can use that free index on our webpage to search for... Uh, your family name too. Just remember to drop the O or the Mac from the name before you type it in that box there, the big box. That's for the root name and the books with your name will come up. And uh, that might give you some hints as to where the name's found even before you get the book or any book for that matter. It's just another piece of the clue. Ooh, now it's time for Around the World in Irish Ways. Well, here's some web pages and videos of the month. Uh, number one, the McKenna Family Memorial Day. I think that's in Baldwin. And it's a two-minute, 22-second video on YouTube. Link on my blog. Number two, Clones County Monaghan Football Preparations. It's sort of like a football festival. They've got family events, and uh, it's a video on YouTube. Got the link on the blog. Number three, English, Scottish, and Irish in Ireland, including Pinner's Survey. And that uh, video is on YouTube, and it's ours, uh, one I did. And it's about changes in land ownership and the plantation of settlers in Ireland. It's a quick one, but it's a good one. And we've had it for a while, but in case you haven't seen it or need a refresher, you might pick it up and view it. It's on our webpage, too. Number four, Irish Christmas celebrated abroad in China, Sweden, Canada, Dubai, Australia, Canada, Turkey. That's the web page of the month. Got the link on the blog. Uh, hey, you can also see our video shorts uh, on our web page and on YouTube. We've got about 14 or 15 of them up, and we're going to have another 10 or 20 going up pretty soon, I hope. Uh, Gosh, that brings it to, end, to the end of Around the World in Irish Ways. Next, we're going to focus on the uh, everybody's favorite, favorite curious news and notes. But, you know, there's a lot going on. I think in next podcast, I'm going to cover uh, a lot more genealogy, and we'll talk about that certificate of Irish heritage that the government's coming out with and the uh, tie the plotment books. There's some things happening there, too, that you might want to know about. I think it might end up being free. And next we've got curious news and notes uh, from Ireland today. Everybody's favorite, the last one. Uh, let's see, what do we have here? Number one, cold weather and busted water pipes in Northern Ireland set the folks in need of water itself. And I see that 120,000 liters are being sent over by uh, Scotland alone to help the thirsty households. Link on the blog to that article. Number two, I've got some friends planning a trip back to Ireland this summer, and they were dismayed to find airfare listed at around $2,000. But I'd say wait and see. Don't be worried about that. It's going to come right back down. That's sort of a, just an advanced strategy. I don't think that will do it for most of us. Number three, talking about air travel, Terminal 2 in Ireland. Well, those passengers traveling to Ireland will not have to undergo customs in the U.S. It'll all be taken care of on the Irish side. Oh, that'll be easy. You won't have to stumble and bumble off that plane and go through all those inspections. Ah, number four, top baby names in Ireland this year are Lily and Ben. Now, that's a switch, isn't it? Followed by James, Patrick, and Thomas. So uh, Patrick's still sort of in there, but it's not up on the very top like at one time it was. Number five, extinct for 150 years, the bittern is making a flying return to Ireland, probably due to a cold snap in Europe. Well, you know, that's life making a, a comeback. Whenever anything goes extinct, we hear a lot of misery, and it's bad, and it's sad, but you know what? 
when life comes back, we should celebrate. So uh, here we've got life making a comeback. Uh, Number six, history repeats itself. If you think today's weather is bad, how about the great Irish frost of 1740, which laid many an Irishman to rest? Fact, one fellow's book or writing says that uh, maybe a third of the population was uh, killed by that frost. I don't know about that, but it sure was a bad one, and uh, link on the blog. Number seven, Ireland knocks off Paris. Frommer's Travel Guide uh, readers have voted Ireland as the top tourist spot for 2011, so that's one more reason those airfares are going to come down. And a matter of fact, they're not too bad right now. Uh, or, you know, for the next month or two, they're pretty, they're pretty reasonable already. So that summer price that my friends got quoted, I think uh, that's going to turn out to be a fiction. Well, all I, the only thing else I've got left to say is uh, I hope you have a very good year. My new year was nice, and, uh, you know, I don't go out running around like I used to do when I was just a young lad and didn't know any better. Yeah, I find it much more uh, entertaining to sit around, have some conversation, maybe a little, uh, would it be a brandy sniffer? No, I've never, snifter? No, I've never gone in for those, but hey, we had some good time. We played some games. We had a lot of people, and uh, it was a lot of fun. So well, however you chose to celebrate today, I hope it was a safe one, and uh, I hope it's a a, uh, a landmark year, and uh, the children are raised well, and uh safely and the adults act with wisdom and gain strength and success and uh, what more can i say i hope i'm here uh, to celebrate the next year with you too and remember we've got seven different podcast fees to listen to i hope you get to enjoy them all and until next time this is mike signing off that's all for today folks joseph warm up those pipes remember we have a broadcast series on irish song and recitation on local history of the Irish in America and on 2,000 years of Irish history as well as on the counties and something special coming up on Irish language, I hope. Uh, We've got all that and more at our head school at irishroots.com. And you know, we've been known to appear, exhibit, teach, and even sing for your special events. Be sure to book in advance if it's important and write me at my American address at Irish Roots Cafe, Box 7575, Kansas City, Missouri, 64116. Leave a message by phone at 816-256-3360. Reach me on my webpage at irishroots.com. Skype me at the Irish Roots Cafe. Uh, Get me on MySpace, Facebook, Twitter, and Irish Central. Members foot the bill so they get first priority, but we're open to all. And by the way... A big thank you to all of our members, and away.